Hey everybody, welcome to Pale in Comparison. In this podcast, my sister uses her knowledge of the Otherverse to take a look at Pact, Wildbow's least appreciated work, and I try to not give away any spoilers. I'm Jenny, and Malia convinced me to read Worm. I'm Malia, and Jenny convinced me to read everything else. This episode, we are covering Damages, chapters 2.1 and 2.2. Before we get into that, however, I'd like to issue a spoiler warning. This podcast is filled with pale spoilers. If you don't know whether Matthew and Edith are ever free of the doom and don't want us to tell you, stop now, read pale, and come back to this podcast. As for Pact, there will be full spoilers through the chapter we are covering. I feel like eventually we're going to be coming up with really, like, really minor spoilery questions. Like, it's already... (laughs) been kind of hard i also keep picking things i don't know the answer to because i'm like ooh, this is a question instead of going back and being like if you don't know what avery's siblings names are yeah, that's true <laughs> i mean yeah that's a good point <laughs> if you don't know whether Bruma's dad ever stopped sucking and don't want uh-huh. us to tell you if you don't know you're a bad judge character <laughs> hey i mean to be fair in the beginning i mean i still didn't really have much hope but there were some people that did and they that's true you know that's it's true. like he he sucked but it's like he might he might you know we were all i feel like a lot of people were expecting to get into his head and be like okay this is why he sucks but like i think that he has the capacity to improve and to be better and to change i just don't think he wants to at all no because yeah he's pretty so i don't shit. think he will no he totally won't um yeah he needs some bad dreams or something. Even though I don't, <laughs> even then I don't think it'll necessarily help. I, he just, I don't really get how that's helping, but sure, help you go for it. Maybe it's helping. I mean, it could potentially, like, if it scares him t- into seeing a future that he really doesn't want, but I don't know yeah. if for him that's gonna. But anyway, back to our actual podcast. <laughs> back to fact. <laughs> back to fact. Woo! All right, so we get to start a brand new arc. Yay! <laughs> That was pretty good. Um, so, Malia, I remember briefly discussing this. Don't worry, we save most of our discussions for this podcast. But briefly discussing um, the arc title and your realization for the last arc title. Such a realization, y'all. It's all law stuff. Woo! I've accidentally looked at a couple of the arc titles on accident while reading, and I'm trying to avoid them. But... With this, I didn't realize it. I was just like, well, reaction one was like, ooh, damages. That's creepy and dark. And reaction two was, oh, my God, damages. (laughs) So for people who aren't, well, knowledgeable in law like me, um, (laughs) what does that mean exactly? So damages is when you sue someone, right? Something bad has happened to you Mm -hmm. and you sue someone. And that's like the relief that you're seeking um, because to do a lawsuit, you need the court to be able to actually like issue something on your behalf that will actually help fix your problem or you don't have standing, which is a whole other thing. But so there's three types of damages that I could think of off the top of my head. The first one is compensatory damages. That's the idea that we want to make people whole. So if you're in a car accident and it was the other person's fault, and you spend $10,000 on medical pills and whatever else, the idea is that that person, or more realistically, their insurance company, Hmm. will pay you what you had to pay as a result of the accident. So, like, making you in the same position that you would have been, right? And then there's nominative damages. The thing that always comes to mind with me is Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift sued some horrible person. Was it Scooter Braun? I don't know. For like familiar pinching her butt or something like that and so she requested what are called nominative damages which is almost always one dollar and it's a symbolic thing it's showing like hey like i was wronged and you're a fuck face um lots and lots of civil rights claims end up being nominative damages because it's harder to prove um compensatory damages but it's a ruling from a court saying like hey you're right that person sucks here you go um and then the last type is punitive damages which are um, rarer, usually require some sort of special statute or something allowing them to be imposed on someone. And that's when we want to punish the person. We think Mm. that they did something wrong. 
So on top of compensatory damages, right, making the person whole, they'll also be like, okay, and you have to pay them $10,000 in punitive damages because what you did was like so shitty that we as a society have decided that you should pay for that kind of like not not yeah. even pay for that that you should uh be punished okay that's your interesting mm-hmm. i did not know any of that so yeah i'm currently in like damages land sort of i'm taking federal courts and a lot of it is like when can you sue the government for damages read basically never um <laughs> but you can sue the government for injunctive relief which is like so damages is like um, retrospective relief it's like something bad has happened to me and I, I'm now trying to like make that whole whereas mm. injunctive relief is like prospective you're looking forward um, saying hey you're doing this thing stop doing it that kind of sucks because there's a lot of shitty things that have happened in retrospect yeah <laughs> you can only sue the government if they give you permission to it's real bizarre yeah I'm sure that's a great way to make everything fair <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Yep. Uh. Um, oh, but to go back, bonds. Mm. Um, I realized this because I thought about bonds for a second, and I'm not in the criminal law sphere, so it took me a bit. But a bond is a formal written agreement where you uh, promise to perform a certain act, right? So usually that's like appearing in court. That's like when you hear like the bond language or bail bondsman or whatever. If you do the thing, you usually get your money back. It's often a deposit. But if you don't do the thing, you like forfeit your deposit or you pay a fine or whatever. Um, hmm. So thinking about bonds as like <laughs> the coercive means by which um, Blake and Rose are forced into the situation, sort of. Um, I guess a bond is like a type of contract. I don't really. So you could kind of say that um, them awakening in itself is a bit of a bond, right? Am I stretching Kind that? of. As I was thinking, I mean, I think, like, at least in terms of their agreement, like, not to lie or, or and all that, because their mm-hmm. their fine would be being gainsaid or to be really fucked. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think that applies to the last arc really well. But yeah, my other thoughts were like, wow, that's a really hardcore title. Somebody's going to get hurt. Damages or? Yeah, sorry for damages. Mm. It was just like, oof, that's that's heavy. And then I was trying to be like, okay, is someone be trying to be compensated or be made whole? Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think that that's that Blake's gonna like exact revenge or whatever for whoever killed Molly in this section, but we'll see. <laughs> Maybe that's what's happening. I guess we'll have to come back at the end and see if anyone uh, did get some damages, and yeah. I guess the law or fiscal sense. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just have to see. So our chapter summaries i'm changing up my plural stuff maybe people like that one better chapter summaries blake and rose attend the town council meeting it goes totally fine and everyone's nice i don't know like him walking out with like magging johannes i was like oh yeah he's making friends (laughs) (laughs) yeah just like if you kind of your feeling yeah just like skim over everything else and it's actually speech yeah he gave a speech there's some kind of weird stuff that is in the middle there, but we can just skim past that. But like, he made some kind of friendly acquaintances, and then yay, yay, yeah, uh, he saved a bunch of money. <laughs> Bummer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, anyway, okay, we'll start getting into it for real. <laughs> so we start out. Um, Blake and Rose basically start to prepare for the town council meeting. They try to, I guess, work together, have kind of a it's kind of a weird conversation, I feel like. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> I thought this was funny in my notes. So what my process is like, I read through the chapters normally or whatever, and then I come back and I take notes and read through it slower. So I know what's happened on my reread. <laughs> and my first note, I like made the document and I, I, I wasn't even going to write notes. And then I was like, wait, the lawyer wasn't at the fucking council meeting. <laughs> I was so fucking upset. I mean, like, maybe he wasn't, didn't say anything. I was just like, uh, like, because we don't know what he looks like. So I, uh, 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 I mean, Rose didn't, I don't know. Uh, what anyway. if Laird's the lawyer, Malia? But, I'm just kidding. Oh, God. <laughs> oh no, I, I said just, a bold and specific prediction too early. <laughs> 
but like where is this man because it seemed like everyone was there maybe he just was like nah i like don't give a fuck about you or maybe he's not a practitioner which makes zero sense because how can you ask him about implements if he's not a practitioner (laughs) (laughs) yeah i mean i guess we'll have to find that out we'll have to find out yeah i was waiting for Um, your rage for that (laughs) man I was weirdly wrong about this council meeting, but it's okay. It was hey, fun. That's okay. It's good. like that's all right. It's hard to predict that, and it's kind of fun to listen to. All right. Well, back to them preparing for it. So he starts like trying to pick, I guess, possible weapons or like supplies. Yeah, I thought he was like trying to pick an implement, and I was like, Blake, what the fuck? Like, slow down, Blake. Also, maybe not a weapon. I don't know. I was just kind of like, whoa. And then it was like, oh, he's he's making a to do list and like a shopping list, and this is really good. Um, Mm. I thought it was an interesting way for Wildbo to potentially lay out like some obstacles and conflicts that might be coming up in this arc, either to be like, this is kind of what the arc's going to be, or to be like, this is what you're going to think the arc's going to be, and he's not going to get any of this shit. (laughs) This is going to continue to be a problem because he talks about money. He talks about the internet, which I was like, does he have a smartphone? Like, what is happening? Yeah, it was just really interesting thinking about, oh my gosh, how is Blake going to make money? And how is he like, (laughs) I put... Um, needing internet access is the biggest hurdle of all cable companies. Like, yes. <laughs> he has to like do all this stuff oh, and no. he can't let anyone in his house. And no, he's like, I should true. contact the lawyers. I'm like, how do you contact the fucking lawyers? <laughs> and then Joel still doesn't have his keys back and I'm anxious about his car. Maybe Joel has extra keys. That'd be nice. Um, I'm like, the police probably fucking seized the car instead of giving it back to Joel because civil asset forfeiture is a problem, even though there was no crime involved. Anyway, they pro- I mean, they, it's Blake, so they, they think there was a crime involved, I'm almost sure. Yeah. Assuredly. Everyone hates him. But it, him, was, it so. was kind of an exciting start to the chapter-ish. Yeah. For sure. In a boring, in a really boring way. <laughs> I'm boring. <laughs> I like lists. But I thought it was fun. <laughs> Good thing about the council meeting, three hours before sunset and three hours after, it'd be free from interference. <laughs> Woo! And then it's just like, Nope. Like, uh, uh, it was so frustrating. I, oh, one interesting thing is if you don't go to the council meeting, is the time during the council meeting, can people fuck with you? Mm. Anyway. <laughs> that's a good question. I don't know. Yeah, that seems problematic. Slash, I'm assuming if you don't go, the three hours before and after still count. But no one's been like, and during. Like, no one's like... <laughs> I mean, I guess it's because they all try to, like, get each other executed during, but still, that's the witch hunters. It's not really them, like, casting spells or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, but they're voting on it, so I feel like that kind of... I'm also... We're not at the witch hunters, but I'm just... I, they're curious. I'll We'll talk about them later. Yeah, Rose isn't doing super hot. <laughs> so, spending no. a lot of time on her own, it looks like. I'm real worried about her. There's also just... I mean, we talked about how, like, Rose had a lot of privilege compared to Blake, because, like, in her past, which wasn't real. But, you know, because, like, Blake was homeless and, like, his family was sexist against him and different things. Um, mm-hmm. But he was a boy and, like, that was interesting, right? But then it's, like, now it's flipped again. Like, it was inverted, but now it's inverted again because, like, Rose is stuck in this mirror and she knows that her- she's going to, like, cease to exist soonish maybe i don't know we don't know when the vestige thing power thing runs out Mm -hmm. um but like rose seems to be wallowing a bit which fair but also like she compares herself to a slave at one point and i was kind of like uh like you're trapped like i'd say you're like a prisoner like you can't but you're not doing work i don't know anyway yeah she's in a bad mind space you know yeah but but it also like i would still i would rather be blake right now like It would suck to be Rose. And so it's been like flipped again. And like the privilege and the power dynamic has kind of been. Yeah, I don't know. It's just like weird and interesting and difficult. And I like thinking about it. And I don't have any good conclusions. (laughs) Yeah. We'll keep that in mind. Like a boring thing to say, but. (laughs) (laughs) So Blake starts talking about how it's an old house and how like it's basically not an open concept house. And uh-huh. I was wondering, Jen, like what is your opinion on open concept? I like it. I mean, obviously like you need some walls for certain things, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in terms of like connecting like the kitchen and the dining area and 
living room mm-hmm. and all that. Like, I'm for it. I mean, I'm cool with it, at least, because it makes it look bigger. Yeah. What about you? So I used to watch a lot of HGTV while I would um, babysit for my friend, because <laughs> the only way the baby would sleep is if you were holding him. And so we would just put HGTV on, or I would, and just, like, watch hours and hours and hours of, like, Fixer Upper <laughs> or whatever. And so, like, the HGTV world is, like, real obsessed with open concept right now. Mm. And, like, it does look bigger. I do like natural light. But, like, I like the ability to get away from people and to have my own space. Yeah. And so I think that, like, walls and doors are real important. And if you're going to knock down, like, all the walls and doors except for, like, the bedroom and the bathroom, like... Only two people can live in that house without killing each other. <laughs> well, I mean, That's I'm, kind of what I think. <laughs> I'm kind of hoping, like, you have some more room. Well, I mean, hope it, it kind of depends on your house. Um, but, like, hopefully you have some more areas rather than just the bedroom and bathroom. Like, maybe you have an office or at least outside or something. Our house, like, it's not totally open concept anyway, but, like... It's open esque. I don't I know. Like it. Well, like but. yours, it's not just like a big straight shot. It's like there's a nice living room place, and then there's like the kitchen dining area. And it's not like we all just are like can like are all in the same space, but it's not closed. I don't know. Yeah, I guess I'm like to me like a living room and kitchen all that's kind of public space anyway. So I'm like if you want to mm. go away from someone, maybe go into one of the more private spots. But mm-hmm. I mean. It's not like we all have the money to build and design our own homes anyway. So. Oh, yeah. No, not at all. I'm just no. like. But I mean, <laughs> ideally. No, for sure. They both have their good good and bad things, for sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let me see. So you put a note about Blake's sight. Yeah, I still don't get it. He's like, I see the spirits. I'm like, okay, but like, are there knives? And like, is it dark? And like, what about your sight? <laughs> like, what does your sight tell me about you, Blake? Fucking nothing. He sees the haze, which, like, what the fuck is this? And it, like, goes away before the council meeting. And I'm like, does this have to do with Blake specifically? Or is this, like, a weird thing about this town? Who made this? Uh, What is it doing? What is it going to do to Blake? Is it just, like, like other bait? Is it just, like, you know, come to this spot, others, you'll have a good time. Like, what is it? But also, I don't think his sight is just, like, I see haze. Like, (laughs) <laughs> so well, i mean he's probably still trying to figure it out i mean obviously like for pale um their sites were influenced by like the carmine influence you know so that's true yeah so those are going to be a little bit more like obviously weird and violent when i think say weird i'm thinking verona specifically so this is weird as verona's well. is fucking weird but yeah. like i mean even hers is like i like the darkness and weird shit and like check and like Lucy's is like I have all these fucking knives check and like <laughs> Avery's like I just want to like touch people handprints connections check Blake's like things are shiny sometimes <laughs> yeah well I mean like they probably have a little bit more uh, well I mean the others are friendlier for one so they can probably hmm. it might be a little bit easier for them to figure out that kind of stuff mm-hmm. off the bat and you there's know? also just more stuff to see maybe because of the carmine energy Maybe. Blake's like, Grandma, he's reading over the notes that Grandma left about all the people in town. And he seemed to say that she, like, pays a lot more attention to others. And she's really, like, focused on them because they were all these, like, cross-references and, like, scientific names and all this stuff. Because the first time I read it, I thought it was like, oh, she doesn't care about others. She cares more about practitioners. And I was like, oh, because she sucks. And then the second time I was like, no, it says the opposite of that, Malia. And then I was like, oh, it's because, like, these were her only real friends. But then it's also, like, she's very scientific. And friends, again, strong word. Anyway, she's very scientific and kind of sees them from, like, in far-off observation-y type way. So I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, maybe not. These were her tools? Her subjects. Her, like... Her something? Yeah. And I was, like, thinking maybe that Blake as, like an outsider slash outcast uh, and his time like on the streets will maybe help him be more like empathetic to slash interested in others because like it seems like most of the practitioners in pale like don't give a second thought about others unless it's like are they gonna kill me or can i use them to try to kill someone else 
And I'm hoping that Blake, like, forms some good and interesting relationships with others that aren't just fairy. Because fairy, like, like they're, they want to fuck with humans. You know, like, they're going to, like, make you notice them or whatever. Yeah. So, let me see. Blake goes and finds Rose. And she's not looking too good. And so they start kind of talking. She's just pretty upset. She's not doing too good. Yeah. I was trying to figure out what's up with her reaction. Like... It's, like, funny because I can totally see myself, like, getting angrier at someone who's trying to help. And I'm trying, I was, like, trying to pin down why. Um, Like, maybe yeah. she thinks that he's being kind of condescending or maybe she doesn't, like, want to have hope. Like, she wants to just, like, lash out at things and express her anger. Or maybe because he's, like, how can I help? It's, like, forcing her to do emotional labor instead of, like, figuring out ways to help. Mm -hmm. um, or maybe it's just, like... Yeah, I, I I was like it was like I could very much see myself and remember myself having times where I've had a reaction like this, but I can't figure out why and why Rose is doing this. I don't know. Do you have any thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I feel like just sometimes if you get in a really bad mindset or like you've had mm -hmm. a really bad day or if you've had some bad things happen, um, it can just like you're saying, it can be really easy to kind of stay in that mindset um, mm -hmm. and just kind of lash out at other people. You kind of like do things that are going to make you sink more into that. Mm. And I mean, him asking like, what can I do to help and stuff like that? Like she might be being like, well, I don't freaking know. I don't think there is anything you can do mm -hmm. to help. So mm -hmm. thanks for freaking reminding me. <laughs> um, I mean, it is, it's kind of frustrating to read from Blake's perspective because it's like, mm -hmm. yo, like, he's trying. It's not his fault, but it is understandable. Yeah. It freaking sucks, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's interesting how later, I mean, I think that, like, him buying the mirrors and grabbing, like, 20 of them was, like, a really nice moment and also kind of helps me figure out what Rose is thinking about because he's like, oh, she, I think she almost smiled or whatever or actually mm -hmm. smiled. And it's like, okay, Blake figures out, like, he he doesn't ask, like, oh, Rose, should I buy these? You know, he just, like, does it. Like, he, like, thinks about her needs and he comes to a conclusion. And he also, like, is doing this thing that allows her to have, like, more agency and, like, not be as trapped. Because, like, by having a lot of mirrors that he's around, you know, like, they can replace them if they break. But also, like, she can always kind of be there physically with him, which is really nice yeah it is really nice yeah i appreciated how we get an explanation as to like how spirits are dumb <laughs> um i also am like it, having come from pale where like verona can like you know turn into a cat and they can just like do all this like insane powerful magic crap to like oh if blake tries to like you know, feed the spirits some sugar. They're going to be like, fuck you. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> it sucks that like his, his practice won't work. And like, it seems yeah. like it, it has been working. So maybe uh, Rose was like overblowing it a little bit, but like, it was like, <laughs> you have to bully the spirits or like show them you have clout. And I was like, how do you bully spirits? Like, what is that? Uh, that was fun. Give him salt instead. Be like, I tricked you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's not going to go well. Yeah, that wouldn't go very well. Yeah, that's not a good idea. <laughs> this chapter was a little bit of like, oh, Malia, you think this? Haha, -ha, nope. Um, because we finally <laughs> get a mention of like grandpa, which like Rose is like grandma taught dad to be a manipulative like shithead. And, <laughs> and like is like, no, grandpa did. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Like, why have we gone, like, this many chapters without you ever mentioning him? And, like, Rose doesn't... He, like, I'm like, does Rose know he exists? Like, because Rose has already had, like, slightly different memories. And so was Grandma Rose just like, nah, fuck that guy. Like, Rose isn't gonna know shit about him. Or, like, what is the deal? Also, later, she she's referred to as Mrs. Rose D. Thorburn. So I guess she was married, and I'm just wrong all around. But <laughs> who the fuck is this man? And what is his deal? And what is going on also the whole like manipulating lessons reminds me of what's her name um which story? chase's sister how, how in in pale how do i remember chase's name and not her name she's so much better she gets the whole good interlude and layla dies and 
that for uh, Fernanda. Yeah, Fernanda. Yeah. I was like, for some reason, I wanted to say something that started with a Y, and then I was like, no, it's Fernanda. See, I wanted to say something that started with an R, and it was really tripping me up. Okay. But yeah, this Both reminds wrong. me of Fernanda. Yep. <laughs> I think it's kind of cruddy that like their family is so jacked up that like Blake using basically, you know, an empathetic type of way of speaking being like i can't imagine how you feel you've been put in a horrible situation like that instead of being like oh this person's trying to like connect with me and like help automatically goes to like no you're being a shithead <laughs> because <laughs> you're being manipulative just like because our family would only say something like this if they're trying to get something out of you or be or manipulate you no but then he like basically admits that yeah i am using what like dad taught us like to be manipulative like he doesn't deny it and he's also just like i'm just trying to like use my like skills Wait, to make the situation better he, what, so okay he, number one he doesn't deny it and then he says like i'm just using what i have or something because i mean rose knows him you know rose rose would do the same thing which is really funny and also really sad well, if anything it's like manipulating her to try to get her to feel better but he, he's yeah, like no, i do manipulation, care i want to help right. you it's not like manipulation i feel like is often not like malicious and self-serving because you you know you try to manipulate miko to eat like vegetables or whatever right yes but that's not a bad (laughs) manipulation if it was successful that's a good point i need to try a little harder my manipulation game in terms of that but um All right. That's it's also point. like hardcore that their dad explicitly was like, I'm going to teach you how to manipulate people. I remember our parents like explicitly teaching me like these are manners and like you're a child and like don't interrupt adults, like wait patiently and things like that. There was no like, this is how you fucking <laughs> make people do what you want. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's probably it's like, this is how you be a nice human. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> And then we finally get to the term diabolus. Uh, yeah. I feel like I need some sort of like funeral music here for my first big bold prediction. Cause it seems like she's this. Yeah. <laughs> um, which we have seen coming for a while, but um, yeah. it's, um, uh, pro- it's, I mean, it's like official. Yeah. It's official. Yeah. Like, <laughs> she's a how do we say this diabolus diabolist i was saying someone diabolist like diabolical i guess like right well i was saying diabolist like demon (laughs) but that's not how demons spelled (laughs) yep (laughs) diabolist so like finally leaves uh tries to go buy some supplies manages to buy a shit ton of mirrors, which makes Rose happy, or at least less pissed off. Tries to buy some actual food. Gets thwarted by a lovely family reunion, where he gets punched and punches someone in the face. And then he is escorted by Laird to the meeting, having to leave behind all his lovely food, which is very sad. Yeah. At least he got, like, the mirrors and stuff. And also, like, maybe a hatchet and, like, maybe something else. Also, he bought a hatchet! <laughs> that's right Uh, okay (laughs) my first note was is fireplaces and stoves a store like canada i'm gonna google this now i've never yeah uh, fireplace it wasn't capitalized it just was like fireplaces and stoves and i was like what (laughs) is that actually i'm gonna just google that just to see everyone's gonna be like you idiots it's not a store um (laughs) um so far Nothing's coming up except for where to buy fireplaces and stoves. <laughs> it seems like a fun place, but like real expensive because fireplaces and stoves are kind of pricey. Mm-hmm. Maybe they have little like barbecues and stuff. Yeah, maybe. Definitely yeah. doesn't need to be buying that when he needs fucking like food. Yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe little homes for all the demons to live in. So oh, they're yeah. Comfy. That's nice. That'd be nice. That's so how thoughtful. It's going to come back. <laughs> draw like a little, like a circle around it and just stick an oven in each one, you know? Yeah. Aw. And so they're all toasty, toasty. Yeah. I feel like that tone of voice is not 
appropriate <laughs> for demons, but yeah, you never know. Might be a little flame, little spark fluff demon. The fluff, like like Cal's fur, right? Have you seen Hal's Moving Castle? I think that's his name. Uh, don't kill me, but I haven't. Oh, you should see it. I've heard it's really good. Yeah, I just haven't gotten my act together. Um, but sure, just like that. <laughs> Sounds right. <laughs> Next, uh, Blake, you should go get some fucking ice cream because you deserve it. So yeah, he bought a bunch of weapony things and some mirrors. Then he went to the grocery store. And everybody fucking sucks, but I guess like their family member did just die, and they're like, this fucker just moved into the house and didn't say anything to anybody else. So I guess it does seem kind of yeah, kind of sus, but. They still suck, though. Yeah, it's interesting that they, like, are kind of convinced that Blake killed Molly, or at least trying to pin that on him. Or You know, like, it feels like the karma has kind of attached itself to Blake and not the other members of this family, maybe. Like, I'm thinking, like, maybe it's, like, consolidated with Blake as the newest, like, Thorburn practitioner or whatever, because maybe that's part of why they're so angry uh i don't know because it's been like this family like has hated each other for a long time yeah but it just the whole like how did you get away with it or whatever like how did you murder my daughter basically yeah. like was just like eh, eh. it's just gotta be so exhausting like why haven't they just all moved to different like parts of the globe by now you know <laughs> just like just get away the house. Yeah. yeah yeah oh yeah they yeah it's awful it sucks. Yeah, Blake beating up Callan was real great. It felt really like, <laughs> fuck yeah. Like, you do that. Like, I'm like, ooh, survival skills or whatever um, from the streets. But then... And then everyone in the store was like, oh, we're gonna <laughs> just lie and say that you fucking did all this shit because you're not selling that house. <laughs> well, he was like, oh, he attacked me first or something. But then he was like, oh, you did shove him. And like, he did shove him. And, like, like Callan, like, put his hand on his shoulder and then he shoves him. And then Callan tries to, like, punch him or whatever. Like, you know, like, like I guess Callan sort of started it. But also, like, if Blake didn't react so strongly to people touching him, it might not have been. I mean, I feel like running at someone to throw a punch when their back is turned is kind of a little bit different than, like, directly responding after someone shoves you. It's not really self-defense anymore. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, I'm, like, on Blake's side, but I also yeah. um, like, was kind of like, well. Technically, like, you know, like. And did shove him. Well, yeah, but, like, he did touch him without his consent, which is technically, like. Te I mean. Oh, wait, battery. Technically oh, we're battery. talking about assault and battery. <laughs> Woo! <sighs> okay, so, um, in some states, like, Texas, this doesn't actually matter because, um. This is the United States. We don't assault. know anything about. Or at least I don't know anything about anywhere else. Right. I mean, I, in terms of law stuff, I shouldn't. And like, this probably applies in England too. I don't know if it applies anywhere else. But so there's like assault and battery, right? So battery is what people are talking about usually when they talk about assault. Mm -hmm. um, battery is like physically touching, it's an unwanted physical touch, <laughs> basically. You can actually batter someone with like cigarette smoke. You can batter you can batter someone lots of different ways, right? But the actual like touch is battery. So you can have battery without assault and you can have assault without battery. Assault is like causing someone apprehension that you are about to like physically touch them in an unwanted way, right? So like making like the making someone think that you're about to batter them basically. So if like I walk up behind someone and like punch them in the head there wasn't an assault there or like there was no assault because they didn't know that that was coming sure. but there was definitely battery whereas if i like raise my fist but don't hit the person like that's assault but it's not battery by the way just a throwback to worm it's assault and battery assault and battery Woo! uh and she was like oh and their whole problematic thing it's so fun anyway it is fun anyway um, i'm sorry <laughs> i do think those are great uh Probably better villain names, but still a great, like, duo name. Yeah, definitely better villain names, probably, but... <laughs> I mean, they're still great, though. 
I mean, yeah. well, it's it's Assault's fault because like battery was just battery. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Different. Very different. Hey, he was a villain at first, right? So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if it makes sense. <laughs> So they both battered each other, but Callan battered him first. Okay. Because he touched him. Yeah. yeah. So. So basically Laird, at a hilarious stroke of actual good luck, Laird sort comes of. in and basically is like, well, I'm going to walk you over to the council meeting. But yeah, didn't get any clothes or food. Just kind of a bummer. Yeah, I just... Uh... I mean, I know Laird's a dick, and I know he hates him, like, blah, 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 blah. But, like, can't you walk him around and, like, let him buy some clothes or whatever at a store? Like, I just, or, like, some food. I don't know. Like, no, I mean, I, I guess mean, I wouldn't have if I was your sworn enemy, but, like, man. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't really have a reason to, and they had to get to the meeting, so. Yeah. But, like, they didn't, because they sit there forever. Like, they had yeah. time. They had time, but. They had time. It made me wonder why everyone else was there so early. Like, it seemed like they were sitting there for a while. But. Yeah. Maybe it's the loopholes. Yeah. So if I figure this out, I might insert some triumphal music here because they're witch hunters. I was right. I don't remember if this is the third time they're mentioned, but like, fuck yeah. Yes. Although not to rain on your prey, but you did say that they were not going to be at the meeting. Uh, yeah. But you're right that they're witch hunters. So that's better. <laughs> That's more yeah, important. this meeting was not what I expected, but it was really like a really neat role. And uh, it made me wonder what the pale community or like the people who've already read Pact who are now reading Pale are like talking about right now. Um, because I think Elliot has been talking about how Melissa could be a cool check on Kenneth if she becomes a witch hunter. And having just read this chapter, I was like, oh, my gosh, like. Like these people, except don't be like these people because they seem to suck. I mean, I don't know about the 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 boy whose name I don't know yet. I didn't pay attention. Um, mm. But Ava's like a lot and like very excited to murder people. Um, yeah. And I'm not. I think that would be bad and is bad. Uh, and maybe there could be a cool, fun kind of version of it. But I don't know. Also, I really... Somebody needs to give me the rules of Jacob's Bell because it seems like there's this council meeting and there's all this stuff and there's these witch hunters and there's all these rules and like they almost fucking murder like Maggie Holt for doing something. And like, it doesn't seem like there's a lord of this area, but there's definitely something and I really don't get it. Okay. <laughs> so the meeting starts. Um, they've layered peer pressures, uh, Blake to introduce himself. So after getting a <laughs> tentative okay from Rose, Blake introduces himself and drops, like, this huge bomb on everybody. Then he attempts to negotiate stuff. And then Laird starts discussions on Blake's seals. So I pictured that they were going to meet in a field. I pictured that, like, there were going to be, like, seven people max, and they all would meet in a circle in a field by some, like, trees. I don't know why, but that's what I thought was going to happen. Um... I like the meeting in a church. It also makes more sense in a place where it snows a lot to not just like stand in the middle of the field. <laughs> That's true. Um, but I wonder if it's like a fuck you to the Thorburn specifically to meet in a church. If there are some sort of like holy things that contradict the, mm. the demon things or whatever. But I mean, I mean, Blake hasn't done any like demon stuff, but he also didn't like burn up immediately. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I guess like Rose senior couldn't have burnt up either or she wouldn't have made it to the council meetings so that's true but it probably she, like i wouldn't be surprised if it did or like, something what she could levitate so she wouldn't walk on holy ground yes because that's that's what would stop everything she can do everything oh, no, it's the sh- no, wait wait jenny it's it's the shoes her implement oh okay you're right yeah so she was she was like it's her nah, blood fuck you holy her ground shoes <laughs> that's right okay that's fair Thank goodness we didn't write the story, right? <laughs> I feel like, what the hell is this? Um, <laughs> but yeah, he introduces himself, kind of like pans over the re- reactions of everybody. And, and we, we meet the people, um, mm-hmm. which was exciting. The The Duchamps only give birth to girls, which is real weird, real extra. 
seems practicey. I hope they're not like aborting all their male ch- children. Seems like they're not. Uh, I also wonder what do the dads do? Like, do they usually marry practitioners who have their own thing going, or do they usually marry like people who don't know what's going on and they just hide it from them? Or do they usually get divorced really fast? I don't know. I mean, they're arranging this marriage between the Bahames and the Duchamps, and it seems like that kid's not going to just like stop being a Bahame chronomancer dude. I'm Maybe they're all chronomancers. I don't know. But they were interesting. It's just like right off the top, like the Bahames and the Duchamps suck, and everyone else is like maybe kind of cool. <laughs> like, <laughs> Oh, and then the witch hunters are scary. But, like, Mara is so fucking cool. She's just like, I've been here before you and I will be here after you. And, like, fuck you, colonizers. And I'm like, yeah. Like, get it. Like, endure um, with your badass self. The Briar girl is really interesting. I didn't expect to see a familiar dominant relationship. Mm. Um, But it's neat. It makes me feel super bad for her. But then it's like, oh, this is what practitioners have been doing to others forever. So... Yeah. I also feel bad for others. That's true. <laughs> I feel bad. It also seems like there's a lot of others that maybe aren't bound in this town because there's like a whole bunch of them. And like the woman with the the blurry face was mentioned again. So she mm. seems like she'll be significant, which is cool. Um, and then like Patrick is here again, which is cool. I wish that there was like a little more emphasis on some of the other others, particularly. I mean, like fairy are like super dramatic humans, you know, like yeah. they're. It's not like even like the goblins and stuff are like a bit different. And I, I'm just hoping we get more of them. I'm very curious about them and what they're doing. But also, even though there are so many people here and it's like packed to the rafters, the fucking lawyer is not here. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get over it. Yeah. I don't know what to tell you there. No, I hate it. <laughs> um, This isn't like a settled prediction of mine and um, because I want to go back and scan some more stuff about different types of practitioners but like Johannes I'm wondering if he's like a heartless or something similar it like someone who sucks youth away I'm thinking that maybe he like is so young like seeming not because he's actually young but because he like keeps himself looking young hmm. um which is why partially like he also has like a whole bunch of little children type things around him hmm. um and so he like takes youth from them and or gives them youth with his weird like carnival like fuck all humans others go wild domain or whatever the crap is happening up there <laughs> um yeah. It's also just like, oh, it's he has the Pied Piper pipes, so he like leads a bunch of children to like their deaths or whatever fun. Um uh. like that realization makes him seem a lot creepier. I could be very wrong. Um, but it seems like maybe he keeps himself artificially young and uh I don't know what to do about his whole the whole like the seal of Solomon doesn't apply in his domain. Like, I don't know what to do with that information. Do people live there? It, I thought innocents lived there. I thought it was like a big strip mall, but like, how could you live there? If like, there's a bunch of others murdering you. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> and then, I'm excited to go there, but any thoughts on the uh, familiar as well in terms of that? Her? Uh, no, his familiar seems like his familiar seems like hashtag pure. Like, He's, like, kind of shiny and, like, he doesn't get muddy and, like, Johannes's coat doesn't get muddy. Maybe because his familiar has, like, imbued some of that characteristic onto him and stuff. Like, his, his like, familiar hmm. doesn't seem like he's, like, rearing to go, like, Girls Gone Wild or whatever. Like, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> A reference I did not expect you to just make right now. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't I don't get it. Um That's but hopefully shit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean hopefully whenever we inevitably go to the North End, we will learn about the Seal of Solomon a little bit because it may or may not exist there, which is bizarre. I'm sorry, I can't get over that. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> Oh, that was the weirdest. Mm. All right, that was that was out of that was out of left field. There, not expect that. All right, <laughs> we're just gonna keep on going. I'm gonna try to just bypass this. Just say you just yeah. Every once in a while, you just throw out these weird things. 
It's all right. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so it kind of seems like Laird's taking charge of the meeting. And he's like, uh, Blake, come introduce yourself. And so Blake basically is like, Rose, is it okay if I do something impulsive that might, like, help? And she's like, I guess if I have to give you an answer. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if she understands what Blake's plan is, because I didn't, but she does, like, agree to it or whatever. It's nice that he asked her. It was also kind of a interesting, like, coup claim thing, maybe, with, like, making Laird ask over and over. Mm. Blake sort of pointed that out, I think. But it just... Yeah, I thought I thought Blake did a good job with this. I thought it was, like, real dramatic. And, like, the spirits might like it. Um, I also thought it was, like, maybe smart. I mean, like, why not make packs of non-aggression or whatever with some people? Like, that's cool. I also thought... It was better than going up there and just being like, hi, please don't kill me. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I don't know. I was kind of like, yeah, cool. I, I, I mean, I've read through this twice and I still am kind of under, or I'm still kind of confused as to like what Laird was doing. I mean, I guess he was like, <laughs> like, let's embarrass you in front of everyone um, by being like, no <laughs> one's going to take your deal. But like, he, they only talk, I mean... Walbo can't have all 152 others or whatever like talk in this meeting. I get it. Um, but it's just I, I was kind of like, yeah, Patrick, like you were totally overlooked. Um, but also, <laughs> wow, Patrick, you're so fucking annoying. Like, please let it go. And like, <laughs> I don't know. It just I I wasn't sure how this like completely fucked Blake or if it did or whatever. Like, it just seemed like I don't I don't know. What do you think, Jenny? What happened? <laughs> I think from his point of view, if he can kind of get a bit of a read on what people are thinking right then, then he can kind of see for one, like, yeah, I guess which way people are leaning as opposed mm-hmm. to letting everybody split and having to like mm. people potentially go into Blake and talk to him later without kind of knowing. Um, for mm. now, like he kind of knows like which people are more likely to be on his side versus like, Yep. You know, even if they don't go over to Blake, from a tactical standpoint, like strategically, it makes sense. That's fair. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was kind of like cool that Maggie was like maybe interested, um, but then she's like, well, I guess not because this is somehow a trap or something. Mm-hmm. Um, I also, <laughs> uh, the Briar Girls answer made me really happy because it was like, <laughs> I'll do it or like, or I don't know what she was agreeing to, but she was just kind of like, hi, I want all the land behind his house. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like I want all and I was like, that. yeah, <laughs> like as a domain. And then just like, I was just like, yeah, like <laughs> I was sort of right about thinking about the Briar girl in connection to large swaths of land. But I think she might also have just been like, or, you know, her bear or whatever mm-hmm. might also have just been like, Ooh, like I want it, which was cool. I was kind of curious, like, just when Maggie was talking to Laird and being like, why is this so much worse than, like, because she was talking about, like, <laughs> how. Why are demons scary? Or, like, so much scarier, I guess, because she was like, I've kind of experienced something real bad, like, wiping out of town, essentially. So why is this so much worse? <laughs> hmm. What did you think about, like, I guess, Laird's explanation or, like, all that kind of stuff? Yeah, it was real dramatic, but mm-hmm. also, like, helped to hammer home the point, the whole, like, like if one of those things was coming and I I knew it and I couldn't do anything about it, like, I would, like, do whatever I could to, like, kill my wife and children, like, before it could come because I love them that much or whatever. Yeah. Was, like, real dramatic. And, but, like, yeah. thinking about, like, Barbatorum, I'm like, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> I think that's fair. <laughs> um... <laughs> I think it was like it felt a little showmanshipy and mm-hmm. also like a little traumatizing for all the kids to say that right in front of them, but like I guess that's their life. Yeah. Like they're part of a practitioner family. I guess he's he did say I do have measures that should be effective. So like what do you think those measures are? Uh maybe as like 
like sprinklers that have like holy water mm. um in his house and maybe like like automatic fire thingies uh it's uh, like a demon detection system that like I'll just go off and like well it's like barbatorum could get into his domain like i'm just like what do you do about that other than i guess lots of lots of different circles i don't know if salt would be important or good uh you could do we're talking about holy binding. salt water holy salt water that'd be cool yeah yeah maybe it's that it should just make a moat <laughs> get a moat with holy so salt water all. Yeah, there maybe lots and lots of like electricity, like like goblins can't cross pipes that have like water or electric current or whatever running through them, and like maybe this dude is sort of a goblin, and so maybe maybe that would help. just like wire your whole house. <laughs> it's true. Uh, I'm sure that he has something a little bit better than that, mm-hmm. but I but they don't know that it's Barbatorum for one. They're just like any demon, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you wouldn't want to prepare specifically for just Barbatorum because there's a bunch of different types that presumably um, get the food you. one from the diaries. <laughs> fur fur. Fur fur. Fur fur. fur. Ah! I want to meet fur fur. No, you don't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> not in real life. <laughs> and the story. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Maggie's like, well, this seems like too much of a trap, so drat you. Um, I do what I want. Um, yeah, it seems like she's made some sort of oath to not swear, and I'm wondering, like, why? And, like, to who? And just... I wonder if it was, like, an impulsive, like, find me thing, or if it was, like, calculated in an exchange for something else somehow. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Briar Girl, yeah, she, want, she wanted a ton of land, and they are like, no. So she just said no. <laughs> yeah. And then Patrick got offended, even though he wasn't like a part of this really. <laughs> I mean, no, but he is, right? Because well, like is, it seems like but... Blake was offering it to like all the other like to everyone. That's true. Right. So yeah, this was like a very practitioner move on Laird's part to be like, I'll focus literally on the practitioners and no one else. But then he's just like wasting everyone's time because he's just like he doesn't even want or he's like not even going to get the thing that they are offering because they're not offering it. It's just like, maybe this is what I would have offered. And then yeah. he's like, okay, that's great. And it's just like fucking like, it just reminds me of like, like dumb, not dumb, just like annoying people in meetings who are like wasting everyone's fucking time. Like we have other shit to do, Patrick move on. Like, I'm, I'm not really feeling like the fear, <laughs> um, that you, sh- you know, that like people get like of the fae, you know, when you're talking about, it. I'm just kind of getting like, <laughs> big annoying you know oh i mean this is really scary and bad and the whole like i want every like a whole generation of your children to like fucking play with and like it's like not great (laughs) it's just like all right move on like (laughs) i don't know jen i have i have demons to fuck with i can't i can't be scared by fairy i mean i don't have the emotional energy mutually exclusive i I guess so (laughs) you gotta pick one then that's fair enough Demons. Like until like Blake and or Rose are like captured by the fairy or whatever the fuck. Like I'm, I don't have, I can't, I can't be afraid of them. I don't have the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. You gotta save your emotional like strength, you know, for what's important. The specific lifespan thing you talked about too, just like in terms of Patrick. Oh yeah. Fucking creepy. Yeah. I like, wonder if that is their actual lives, because he didn't say, like, that it was, but it was very specific. Yeah, he did, yeah, that's the thing. It's like, it could be, and then that's extra jacked, be. but he didn't specifically say that that was also, all their lives. But also, how would he know? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, either way, it was said to try to mess with them, and they didn't react, but you never know how that's going to be messing with their heads. Um... The ending of the council meeting was kind of confusing to me. They talk a little bit about Molly's murder and the investigation. And then they pivot from that to like talking about Toronto and Ottawa. And I was like, is this about Molly's investigation or like Molly's death? Like, are you worried people are going to come in and try to investigate that? Or is this like about the town expanding because it's like, oh, nobody really seems interested but us. And so I'm kind of like, oh, or something like it seems like maybe 
they're worried that a lord or something will come in and try to like take over if the town expands in like a way that doesn't keep a good power balance or something. Do you have thoughts? <laughs> mm. No. <laughs> Was I supposed to not know what they were talking about? I'm not gonna lie. Can you repeat <laughs> a little bit what you said? Just because I was trying to like skim over this at the same time. So, right. Sorry. Well, just so they're like Molly's investi- like the investigation of Molly's death, and then they're like, does Toronto something, and does Ottawa something, and like what about the like Greater Toronto area, and what about like, and it was like we're the only players here, and I was like, it seemed like it was setting the boundaries for the story as to who I'd have to worry about, but I wasn't sure like what the fuck they were talking about i mean i guess you'll find out okay yeah yeah i'm not gonna be helpful whatsoever so sorry <laughs> <laughs> yeah they did a vote and two people voted to execute maggie everybody else was like no yeah i i wonder what maggie did it's another like i'm like you're not even gonna say what she did like what is this and also like the witch hunters are scary and want to murder people and they're not great they're like really really bad cops um and assassins or something it was interesting the whole like they vote by implement and like blake not being sure if he was allowed to vote like if he didn't have an implement and also like does that mean none of the others can vote because like what the fuck Um, yeah that's true that would be bad and then also, I just like the briar girl was just like yep fuck this girl (laughs) like i feel like the 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 bear is like yeah if another or like if there's a chance a practitioner can die let's do it like i just feel like he's like not oh, kevin <laughs> the humans um and yeah. then also it seems like maggie and that behem boy have some history because he was just like eh, i'm fine if she dies i was like okay like <laughs> go away <laughs> yeah like hmm, like you all seem pleasant people so meeting ends um 7 44 said the store is closed in 12 minutes and so didn't really think he quite had enough time to go get food which is kind of sad but basically they're walking back home and end up talking to Johannes and Maggie which is pretty cool yeah yay friends <laughs> friends yeah it sucks that like the store's closed at 8 this is like another signal that it's a small town and i mean like i guess that's not a crazy early time um, but it's not like, I mean, I could go to, or Target's 24 seven. I don't even know. I feel like Target's are open till at least 10 or whatever, you know, like it just seems a little early. Yeah. It is um, a little early. Yeah. So the conversation with Johannes was interesting. I feel like I like Johannes, but I don't trust him, obviously. Like he's a probably major antagonist. I mean, it could be fun if it flips around. Um, like it seems like Maggie's going to kind of be an ally ish i think um they're at a similar level of power and stuff whereas johannes has a whole bunch of other crap going on and he's also like for a price and like blah 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 Mm -hmm. um i also he lays out two kind of options for them like seeming to suggest that like at the next council meeting in a month they're probably going to vote on whether or not to like execute blake and so he needs to win people over or whatever so it seems like the two options are like Johannes can help whatever that means or he needs to like win enough people over to not vote for him to be executed yeah which is interesting and stressful and a fun new timeline mm-hmm. deadline thrown into the mix yeah, like good freaking luck man yeah especially if it's like oh you can't leave your house like <laughs> yeah and then the whole and then the whole north end absurdity where they're like there's no seal and i'm like what the fuck um yeah i don't know what to do with that <laughs> have to see maybe we'll be able to take a field trip someday maybe we'll never know we're definitely going to the north end <laughs> we're we're definitely, definitely going. going yeah so it's too good of a setup to <laughs> otherwise <laughs> yeah um i like maggie i hope that she and blake manage to be allies or something because like she wants books and he has lots of them and he needs a friend and she exists and uh i don't know i just this whole town and everything is very toxic with the whole like 
there's a lot of language about like I might have to use you and like you'll use me and like there's just a lot of like like I use my friends for like social companionship Mm -hmm. and uh you know sometimes they'll drive me to the airport or like you know but it's it's not like I'm getting things out of my relationships with these people but it doesn't have to be like selfish I don't know I and like these practitioner relationships are just so like I mean, on the other hand, though, like, it's kind of nice that they spelled it out. Yeah. As opposed to, like, been thinking that but not really spelling it out. I feel like that's could be almost a step, like, a show of good faith, in a sense. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I really like her scrapbook. Um, mm. I was wondering if she, like... I'm I'm curious as to how Maggie was introduced to the practice. If like I'm thinking maybe she stumbled on something, like the route to that she came across like a thing and then realized magic was real or whatever, as opposed to like being in a family or making a deal with some others. And maybe I don't know. I just I really I appreciate her drive. I appreciate like her scrapbook. Yeah, I do too. I don't know. What do you think about her being a goblin queen? Yeah, that's really surprising. I'm, I'm like assuming that's what she is or something just because like she has those two goblins with her that don't say anything, which was weird. I'm like goblins usually fucking anyway. She's surrounded by fairy all the time or whatever. Like she comes in and they're all like hanging all over her and sit right next to her. And it was just like, I would think that they wouldn't want anything to do with her. She also doesn't seem as like hardcore as the um, American Liberty. Mm-hmm. Um, but... Like, maybe she's not. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. It's just surprising that fairy are so interested in someone who, like, fucks with goblins at all. That's true. They also haven't been very... I don't know. I'm I'm surprised they didn't, like, talk the whole way back and, like, fart and do a bunch of stuff. I just want to note that I think that Maggie, when she's leaving says that she feels it makes her feel blue and oh. i think that was like a blue balls joke definitely which i didn't get until the second time i read it and then rose like doesn't get it at all either and i was just like ha, ha, ha. like <laughs> yeah it's like, pretty funny <laughs> poor maggie not being able to swear she obviously really wants to and it's really funny like yeah it was good <laughs> <laughs> like you're sad no damn it <laughs> dang it no oh geez <laughs> so anyway so now they head on home um Rose still isn't in a great place. Still not really doing that good in terms of talking. Still comparing her to being a slave and him being the master, um, which is a little. This felt not fair and not true because, mm-hmm. like, Blake did not imprison her. Blake is not forcing her to work. Blake is not forcing her to do anything. Blake like has expressed a desire to free her and has like tried to help her out. Like it's almost just like she's like trapped in a prison and he's just like on the outside being like hey (laughs) yeah like i just don't have a key but yeah like it's not rose is not blake's bound other that he forces to go do things for him yeah you know it's true it does suck but no it does suck yeah yeah and we learn what she is sort of yeah so say she's a vestige or a vestige. I say vestige. I don't know. Oh, I like vestige better. Oh, all right. I just said vestige, but... It kind of reminds me of vegetables. Sounds more fun. If you say vestige. Vegetables. 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 <laughs> Anyone get that reference? Probably not. Really. Yeah, let us know. Yeah. Vegetables. 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 <laughs> but yeah, so the idea, from what I understand, is that vestiges or vestiges are somewhere between a simulacrum and an echo they haven't used the word echo in this book and i don't know why they keep saying ghost i don't know if i didn't think those were different i don't know i mean blake still doesn't kind of know anything right but i feel like the book should have said echo and not ghost because he reads the book to be like what is this that's true let me see it says that in the book. The, I don't think it actually says ghost in the book. Or it doesn't it might not. tell us if yeah. it does or not. That's fair. 
Um, Maybe just... Wild Bill's trying to like, because he also hasn't done like site with a capital S yet, and I'm, I'm maybe he's either hasn't figured out all the terms or he's like easing us into it. Probably. But yeah, so to me it seems like that Rose is like the echo of Blake, like the desire for Blake to be a woman is still kind of what I'm going with. I mean, like, or maybe she's a flawed simulacrum, but why didn't Grandma Rose just make like a perfect one? I don't know. I'm curious as to what her power source is. Uh, It's also like she's disappearing and that sucks a lot. And no wonder she's like so upset. Yeah. Um, I'm, I, I hope we find out. I mean, I feel like we'll find out why grandma did this hope maybe hopefully it's for more than just to get around the whole why ever she had to pick a girl thing yeah not clear we'll see uh and it's probably not a wholesome reason <laughs> yeah so yeah they kind of talk about that and then they do come up with an interesting strategy to use against Laird potentially mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. which definitely sounds like nothing could go wrong <laughs> It sounds like such a bad plan. Like, like, well, the the plan of like get them out, like sick the Mounties on Laird is like such a dumb idea and won't work because Laird is the Mounties. You know, just like that's not happening. And also, your karma's bad, Blake. Like, you can't order pizza. Like, what? Um, yeah. And then, like, <laughs> I yeah. the getting his kids interrogated is like real funny, and I like that more. But it's also like your dad's the chief of police. Like, that's your. Eh. They're not going to believe you over the Bahames, you know? I don't know. Yeah. I'm excited to see what happens or if they go in this direction or if they go in another one. It'll be funny. That's true. (laughs) All right. So now we're getting to Malia's bold and specific prediction of the week. Yeah, I was excited because this week I actually thought of one without really having to think about it. And it's funny because I've kind of made a joke about this in the past. Mm -hmm. Um. And like kind of discussed it a lot, but I'm going to say officially that I think that Blake is going to take Rose as his familiar. Ah, um, okay. I, th- I think that this will allow Rose to leave the mirror. And I mean, it's just like, she's a friendly, like this will, it's like Snowdrop, right? This will allow her to continue to exist. Um, she's mm. also like friendly. They're also a good team. They work together. Um, he doesn't have to go find some other, other and like, like, work out some sort of like deal with them and get to know them like i mean i guess i don't know exactly how powerful rose is but like if they were gonna do a shitty familiar anyway like might as well like start with the one right there and help out your girl um and like get a little power boost maybe and then move on um okay so yeah that's i think i mean maybe i just like have just read palin so i'm thinking a lot about snowdrop but i think that's where this is going okay awesome i like that i also like the you, you said it's not that big of a bold and specific prediction but i still like what you're talking about johannes in terms of like being a heartless practitioner well i think it's it's just like i think that's a like solid prediction i'm just not quite sure that i'm totally settled on it as like that you buy it yeah. totally well, I just, I'm not sure if Heartless is the right descriptor, but I do think mm. that he has, like, artificially kept himself youthful via the practice. Okay. And that that ties into his whole weird Pied Piper shtick. I'm also confused as to why, like, this, like, glowing and pure astral body wants to hang out with the Pied Piper, but, like, whatever. I mean, that's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> so, I guess, uh, we're going to go into our pale in comparison part. Um, or again, we kind of talk about pale throughout the podcast and little snippets. How do you think this, I guess, town, I was going to say town council, town council meeting <laughs> compares to some of the meetings that we've had in pale? Yeah, I think it's really, I mean, it's, it's interesting. It in pale, like the Kenneth others meetings, I don't know what they were like when Miss was in charge, but with mm-hmm. Matthew and Edith in charge, like they're in Matthew and Edith's house, um, which is a private place. Whereas these are, they're in a church. They've like fucking, they're like, yeah, we take this shit over. So that they seem more hidden in pale and kind of more out in the open. 
impact. Jacob's Bell has regular meetings that everyone is invited to. There's specific rules around the meetings. And I mean, like, Pale doesn't need that because they're all supposed to not kill each other all the time anyway. But it seems... I can't think of, like, a regular schedule. If maybe, like, the practitioners just aren't, like, invited regularly. Mm -hmm. It seems like... Um, I mean, there's been a bunch of meetings that the Kenneteers aren't invited to. And I'm not sure if there is, like, a regular schedule. It's also in pale it's a meeting of a bunch of like allies who are trying to make something work we're in pact i think they are trying to make jacob's bell work but it's a meeting of a bunch of like people who fucking hate each other and are trying to like one-up each other so maybe they need more rules yeah i mean having votes once a month on like who you want to try to <laughs> murder murder um <laughs> yeah <laughs> haven't done that in pale so Yay. 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 There's points for pale. <laughs> Yay for Kenneth. Any other thoughts on that? Just like, it's interesting seeing the different ways that practitioners try, or, and others, try to, like, engage in self-governance. Um, hmm. And it's kind of fun. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's kind of interesting seeing, like, the difference between one meeting that is run by others versus the one that's run by practitioners. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So our discussion question for this week, basically is we're seeing how much Rose's life suck and <laughs> also how much Blake's life sucks right now. Would you rather be Rose, Blake or Charles? Malia thought that we should just leave it to Rose or Charles, which is fair, well but I still think Blake's life sucks a lot, man. So. Yeah, I I feel like right now, I mean, I I guess I would always rather be Blake is my thinking because mm -hmm. Rose is trapped in a mirror and Charles is forsworn, right? And like, that sucks. Right now, I would rather be Charles than Rose, but I would rather, like, I think Rose is going to get out of the mirror world, which means I would rather be Rose than Charles. Hmm. <laughs> but I'm interested in to all, as to all of y'all's thoughts I also know that Blake is like the unfortunate slash unlucky protagonist so please 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 don't spoil anything for me slash um, use spoiler tags judiciously yes. if you're going to pull in later stuff because yes. um, it seems like Blake's life might get worse <laughs> <laughs> true I guess he does have like power so that's true but yeah but we'll, well still I mean, leave he, it. Can, he can walk around and he can he can walk around um yeah so i mean if blake or charles though i don't know yeah charles can probably order pizza maybe not he can't have know. like a credit card or anything right well he does have the help of the help of like the pale like, right the charles others, is not so. right the, um charles is not your average forsworn yeah he's got a little bit better than your yeah. average forsworn um, like it ain't like we added Seth's name in there. Although he still has it better than the average Forkspawn too, because Nicolette's protecting him. I mean, one thing we can agree is that it sucks to be all of them. So <laughs> you just have to pick which yes. one sucks the most to you, um, or the least. Yeah, which other one? Is it which one sucks the most? Whatever, it's fine. Pick whatever you want. <laughs> just write. Just write something. <laughs> <laughs> all right tell us well, your thoughts tell us your thoughts pretty please um all right well thanks for listening everyone if you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast please subscribe share it with your friends and leave a rating and review if you'd like to support wild though as he continues to write fantastic stories go to patreon.com slash wild though you can follow the pod on twitter at pale comparison or send us an email at pale in comparison pod at gmail.com Keep an eye out for our Reddit thread in r slash parahumans, where you can answer our discussion question and share your thoughts on this episode. In addition, if you'd like to see all of my predictions laid out, check out our episode description for a link to a prediction tracker. All right, our fun fact for the week. Um, the first person convicted of speeding was going eight miles per hour. Uh, specifically, Walter Arnold of the English village of Paddockwood, Kent, in 1896.
going four times the speed limit in his 19th, I know, 19th century Benz. Because <laughs> I guess the speed limit at the time was two miles an hour. He got vroom, a ticket. Vroom. <laughs> what was that? Vroom, vroom. Vroom, vroom. Okay. Thank you. Um, the constable had to chase him down on his bicycle, and he issued him a ticket for four pounds, seven shillings. Yeah, that's sort of a lot. Yeah. Well, I mean, the four times the speed limit, man. <laughs> it's a lot. Yep. <laughs> All right. Everyone have a good week, and hope you enjoy the podcast. Yep. Bye. Bye. Bye.